As someone that has spent most of the year with the Pixel Fold as my daily driver, used the Z Fold 5 for the past month, and extensively covered the upcoming Pixel 9 Pro Fold, I've gained a unique perspective on the foldable market, and now with the Z Fold 6 available, I think many are wondering if it's worth the upgrade or wait for what could potentially be a huge leap forward in the Pixel Fold 2, or sorry, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. So in this video, we'll take a quick look and we'll compare side by side. Keep in mind, this is from the perspective of a hardcore Pixel user, first and foremost, as I typically don't use Samsung devices. But thankfully, AT&T sent out the Z Fold 6 to review and naturally I wanted to compare it to the existing Pixel Fold and the upcoming Pixel 9 Pro Fold to help give you guys the best insight. Either way, let's start with the hardware, and honestly, Samsung continues to simply kill it in this area, delivering top-tier displays, a top-tier processor in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy, with a premium design and build, while yes, also having decent cameras for a foldable. This year, the Z Fold 6 continues to refine those aspects even further, boasting a slightly wider cover screen with thinner bezels, a much thinner chassis now with flat matte edges, sharper corners, and a redesigned hinge that allows the device to unfold much smoother thanks to that updated spring mechanism. And not to mention, it's about 14 grams lighter than last year's model, making it a bit easier to handle. These improvements are no doubt subtle, especially if you haven't felt the differences in person, but side by side to the Z Fold 5, it feels significantly more polished. When the display is unfolded, I keep thinking about how it feels like a futuristic, ultra-thin tablet, and when closed, it mimics the form factor of a modern smartphone, like maybe the Galaxy S24 Ultra, for example, with a much more usable cover screen, which I'll talk about in a bit. But for now, I'll say I'm quite surprised with how big of a difference the extra 3 millimeters in width does to the Z Fold 6 to make it feel much more functional. By comparison, the Pixel Fold 1 is starting to feel a bit outdated. Don't get me wrong, it's still a solid piece of hardware and kudos to Google for still keeping it just as thin than the brand new Z Fold 6. However, many of the rumored improvements in the Pixel 9 Pro Fold address areas where the original fell a bit short, with the 9 Pro Fold expected to have an even thinner chassis plus the inner and outer display is rumored to have thinner bezels and a taller, more traditional smartphone style cover screen, I find Google is going to catch up big time in the design department. Not to mention, the 9 Pro Fold should have a redesigned hinge, allowing the phone to open completely flat, which was one of the biggest complaints of the Pixel Fold 1. Basically, what I'm trying to say is these upcoming improvements are pretty important to consider, both for Google if they want to stay competitive, but also might be worth waiting for if you're thinking about getting a foldable right now and you're trying to pick between the Z Fold 6 and the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. Switching over to screens, I do think the Z Fold 6's cover display is pretty much perfect in my opinion. After spending the past month with the Z Fold 5, I do agree with those that say it still felt a bit narrow, not unusable, but I definitely noticed content being cut off in YouTube in particular where I could rarely see the view counts in the subscription feed, whereas now I see them much more often. Needless to say, the improvements to the cover screen this year I am mostly very happy about. It's about 3 millimeters wider, as I mentioned earlier, so all the normal tasks like typing, video watching, or just scrolling through apps allows more room for content to breathe a bit while still being relatively easy to use one-handed. And of course, we have that gorgeous 7.6 inch inner display. In this regard, the size changes don't really feel as noticeable here as it's mostly the same dimensions as last year. I do find the squared off edges make the display feel more immersive, the matte plastic bezel is a perfect anchor point to hold it in tablet form while in use, and the crease has had a bit of a change as well. While it's not a drastic improvement, the crease of the Z Fold 6 is less noticeable than the 5, feeling more like a tiny thin line rather than a deep indent, though it doesn't really match the seamlessness of the OnePlus Open. Lastly, Samsung's display tech is simply perfect to say the least. The screen gets plenty bright at 2600 nits peak brightness, has vibrant colors even with the default settings, and the aspect ratio feels great to interact with whether it's in portrait or landscape mode. I think the only thing missing here is the anti-reflective coating like they used on the S24 Ultra, which would have helped make a huge difference in mitigating glare, but I have a feeling this is something we're going to see next year, unfortunately. Then we take a look at the displays on the Pixel Fold. The 5.8 inch cover screen is notably wider than most foldables, making it surprisingly comfortable and it does do a good job mimicking a traditional smartphone experience. Aside from some minor challenges with one-handed use, I find it's a versatile display that handles everything from texting to social media to video watching quite well. Personally, I do 
understand why so many people like it, and I'll be sad to see this go with the upcoming Pixel 9 Pro Fold, and I'd even argue that Google should still release a Pixel Passport or something similar. Something non-folding with a form factor like this would be really interesting to say the least. Either way, the wider cover screen translates to a wider aspect ratio on the 7.6 inch inner display, primarily optimized for landscape mode, and has a lot of parallels to the Pixel tablet. For the most part, I find it to be equally as capable as the Z Fold 6's inner display, great for videos, spreadsheets, and multitasking, although the Pixel Fold's inability to unfold completely flat makes gaming feel a little bit less stable, if that makes sense. I also found portrait mode to be a bit awkward on the Pixel Fold as well, unlike the Z Fold 6 which felt comfortable in both orientations. The crease on the Pixel Fold is more pronounced too, causing a ton of glare in outdoor environments, and it is hard to look past it, especially with the lower peak brightness compared to the competitors. Although the leaked images of the Pixel 9 Pro Fold suggest there's going to be a ton of changes in the displays department. The cover screen is rumored to be slightly wider than the Z Fold 6 while being equally as tall, addressing a common complaint from Samsung users. The inner displays are also expected to be wider and more symmetrical that should make portrait use much more comfortable, and leaks are still early, but I do believe we're getting a less pronounced crease, but we'll only know for sure when we get our hands on with it. Moving on, let's talk software, and this is where there can be some divide within the Android community, and honestly, there doesn't have to be. Both Pixel UI and One UI have their own strengths and weaknesses, so what works best for you will come down to your own tastes. The way I see it, the biggest appeal of Samsung's One UI is the massive amount of customization options and features. For a while now, users have enjoyed a ton of classic Samsung staples like the theme store, lock screen customization, the good lock module where you can tweak nearly every aspect of the appearance and functionality, you can install third party icon packs, have a distinct layout for the inner screen versus the outer screen, use Bixby routines for automating tasks, and many, many more. Plus, there is a ton of features for power users as well, like S Pen support, which feels right at home on the large inner display, Dex mode for that PC desktop like experience, and Link to Windows where you can access your apps, manage notifications, and more from your PC to your Z Fold 6. Samsung also has been adding a ton of AI features to One UI as well. There are some interesting ones like their fill in the border, generative edit feature, circle to search, instant slow motion video on any recorded clip. Samsung Notes in particular is really benefiting from this as well with the ability to draw a rough sketch of an item where AI will fill in the gaps for you. It can automatically clean up your handwriting, auto format your notes, or summarize a longer note document. All these features seem genuinely useful if you find yourself using the Samsung Notes app. And as a Google user, that's actually where the majority of my issues lie. If you do prefer Google's own apps and services like I do, you might find yourself not using most of these AI features like the summarizer in Samsung's first party browser. Samsung's voice recorder app seems slightly less accurate than what we have on Pixels for transcription anyway. And Google Photos has a much better magic eraser that is available to all Samsung devices anyways. To me, I find Samsung's AI features aren't really as polished as the Google implementations, and some of the new stuff, like the sketch to image feature for photos in particular, I don't see a practical use case for. This is a whole conversation in itself, and I might make a video about it, but these AI features are starting to get to a point where it's a conversation about quality versus quantity, but to keep things simple, Samsung is going for quantity, which kind of makes most of them not worth using, especially not worth paying for if Samsung does stick true to their free until 2025 promise. Then, we switch over to the Pixel Fold software experience by comparison. I've spent many years at this point with Pixel UI in general, and I can confidently say it's a clean, familiar interface that many Android users appreciate for its minimal aesthetic, intuitive navigation, and smooth animations. From my perspective, it's also designed to have a lot of features that simply work in the background with no hassle. Things like call screening to block unwanted contacts, smart replies suggesting responses with conversational awareness, now playing that seamlessly identifies music and displays displays it on your lock screen, at a glance that gives relevant alerts throughout the day, and adaptive battery which learns your usage patterns to optimize accordingly, just to name a few. Plus, Google's signature feature drops consistently bring new functionality and improvements on a near monthly
monthly basis. In exchange for this highly curated smart experience, customization options are severely limited compared to One UI. You get some basic theming, lock screen clocks, and material you theming, and that's really about it. You're mostly stuck with the experience Google provides, and you need to decide what offering better suits your needs. Don't get me wrong, all the benefits are nice to have on a foldable, as there's no other company offering a similar experience at this time, but I will say the foldable specific aspect still needs work, at least compared to One UI. I want to give them credit, Google did add features like app pairs and a forced full screen mode for all apps, and out of the box, a lot of Google apps were optimized for the larger screen, so that is good, but overall, there aren't a ton of features built into Pixel UI that take advantage of the foldable form factor. Even the upcoming Android 15 update that I've been testing for months now, there doesn't seem to be much change either, mostly visual tweaks rather than functional improvements. Personally, I think Google is still exploring the full potential of foldable devices, and that's going to continue to spill over to the Pixel 9 Pro Fold, which is something you should consider if you're thinking about waiting. I know that was a lot, but we're almost done as we transition into performance and battery life, and I'll try to keep things brief. Long story short, the Z Fold 6 is powered by the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy paired with 12 gigs of RAM, and it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect from a flagship Snapdragon device. It's reliable and smooth for gaming, allows for quick multitasking, and is more than enough for everyday tasks. I do find it can still get warm during very high intensity gaming sessions with Warzone Mobile or Genshin Impact at max settings, which can result in some thermal throttling, but otherwise it's a solid experience. Battery life for that Snapdragon processor is pretty decent too, leaving me with typically 20 to 25% at the end of a mixed use day, consisting of videos, texting, calls, gaming, music, maps, and more, which translates to roughly 10 hours of on-screen time, whether I'm on data or Wi-Fi. My only issue with the battery life on the Z Fold is charging speeds as I find them to be way too slow for my liking. I know there's a lot of people out there that leave comments saying they don't care, but me personally, I cannot stand waiting for a full charge, especially if I'm about to head out, or if I forget to charge overnight, or if I have a productive need that I'm trying to take action on. Samsung does say you can get to 50 percent in 30 minutes with a 25 watt charger, so that is good, but when I see that the much older and cheaper OnePlus Open can get to a full charge in about 40 minutes with a brick included in the box, I feel something is very wrong. Now, switching to the Pixel Fold with its Tensor G2 chip and 12 gigs of RAM, it's a relatively good experience. It performs surprisingly well for a chip that will be two years old this October, especially when it comes to the Android OS itself. Google has nailed the performance as everything feels fluid and responsive from opening apps to navigating the UI and those high frame rate animations. Pixel UI is simply rock solid in performance and even surpasses the fluidity I see in some Snapdragon enabled devices. So it is great there. As we know, the Tensor G2 is not really a gaming powerhouse, so you will have to lower graphics settings quite a bit on more demanding titles like Warzone Mobile or Genshin Impact while taking more frequent breaks in between. But for more optimized games like I mentioned earlier, the G2 does just fine. Battery life, however, I don't think is even close to the Z Fold in my opinion. I average around 8 hours of on-screen time on Wi-Fi only and maybe around 6-ish when it comes to data usage. In fact, cellular performance, at least in my opinion, is one of the weakest aspects of the Pixel Fold. Whenever I'm on data, I can typically expect the device to get warm, especially if using maps or other resource-heavy tasks for a long period of time, and I notice I'll be hovering around 2-3 to three bars when I'm at the office, where my Snapdragon-enabled device constantly stays around 4-5 to five bars. The rumored Pixel 9 Pro Fold will be packing the Tensor G4 and 16 gigs of RAM along with a new Samsung modem that should bring improvements. The Tensor G4 is is going to use Samsung's latest 4 nanometer process and a new packaging method to help keep things cool. The 16 gigs of RAM should help allow for more AI services to run on device, and the new modem is bringing satellite connectivity that should hopefully improve cellular connection as well, so I am very hopeful. But I don't think gamer performance will be addressed here, and there's still a chance the modem won't be up to par with a Snapdragon chip. So if those are important to you, it might be worth waiting, but if I had to bet money on it, the Z Fold 6 will still better suit your needs in those areas. Not to mention, the 9 Pro Fold is rumored to have a smaller battery as well than the Fold 1 at 4560 milliamp hours versus 4821 mAh, so unless the Tensor G4 chip is hyper-efficient despite the rumors of it being a minor spec bump, I expect the battery will be very similar to what we have today. 
today. Lastly, let's take a quick moment to talk about cameras, and in regard to the Z Fold 6, they are fine, no more, no less. You get the same 50 megapixel sensor as last year's model that still does take good photos, especially in ideal lighting conditions. There's also a new 12 megapixel ultra wide that should handle videos and low light situations better, and a 10 megapixel 3x telephoto lens for those long distance photos. Paired with Samsung's usual suite of software features, you will be able to get good results, although it still won't fix the tried and true issue of blurry photos in indoor lighting scenarios, especially if there's movement involved. To keep things simple, it is a fine camera setup, but it is not Samsung's best. And for a $1,900 device, I understand why a lot of people are frustrated here. In my opinion, this is an area where I am confident the upcoming 9 Pro Fold will outshine the Z Fold 6 in both raw hardware and a wider variety of situations. Even today's first gen Pixel Fold I think does a great job compared to the Z Fold, and if Google can improve the hardware and their computational photography algorithms even further, it'll be a no-brainer. Basically, if camera performance is important to you, definitely wait to see what the 9 Pro Fold has in store. With all that said, this was a super long video, but all of this was necessary to answer the question, should you wait for the 9 Pro Fold or go straight for the Z Fold 6? I'm going to do a full comparison when the actual 9 Pro Fold does come, but depending on your priorities, I'd consider waiting. If you want the Pixel software experience and you're happy with the suspected changes in the design, aka that taller cover display, and are looking for one of the best camera options, I really think the Pixel 9 Pro Fold will suit your needs. On the other hand, if raw performance is your concern, if you're a power user that wants access to Samsung's incredibly robust toolkit, and simply put, want the reliability of a foldable that's been refined over the course of six years, the Z Fold 6 is a solid, well-rounded device. Then of course, if you want the best of the best hardware, these Chinese brands are absolutely killing it, and it's worth taking a look if you can easily get your hands on one, or the OnePlus Open is still a great device and should hold you over until the Open 2 comes out sometime in 2025. Regardless, it's a great time to be a foldable fan, but I'm going to stop talking now and leave it to you guys. We have about two weeks left until the official reveal of the 9 Pro Fold, and with what we know so far, would you grab a Z Fold 6 or wait to see what Google has in store? Leave a comment and let me know, as I'm sure the entire Android community would love to hear everyone's insight. In the meantime, I'm getting out of here, but before I do, huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now that are awesome in supporting us while we work hard to make the best Android content possible. Don't forget to grab the July wallpaper pack that does include foldable versions, by the way, and if you're not a member and want to gain access, hit the join button down below. With that said, I'm getting out of here. This has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google, and I will see you in the next one.